Good evening, family. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank you all so much for joining us here at Kingdom Builders Ministries International. I'm Prophetess Tahita, and my husband, on behalf of my husband, Apostle Vince, and myself, we would like to thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Oh, my goodness, we have a, a great word that is coming up tonight. I'm excited for us all, for us all, for us all. Come on in, come on in. Make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit your uh, notification. Uh, invite a few people. Tonight is going to be really, really good. Amen. So uh, before we get into the message, let's just uh, go into prayer. Let's uh, go before the Father right now, uh, just right there where you are. Father God, we just ask that you open up our hearts, O oh Lord. Uh, help us to let go of the cares from today, O oh Lord. Help us to lay aside every heavy weight, every burden, O oh Father, and depend and lean on you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. As tonight word go forth, may uh, someone's heart be changed. May uh, burdens be lightened, O oh Lord. Open us up that we may receive from you like never before and may our lives be changed from this word tonight in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So before we get into the word, uh, we would actually like to share with you all uh, the new platform to make sure that you all are able to follow us through and get them good, good questions in tonight. Amen. So stand by and take a look at uh, our video. Amen. Well, how do I ask questions? While you're watching from Facebook or YouTube, simply check the comments and one of the chat hosts will provide the link for you to our Faith Form Live question line. You simply click the link and it will take you to the question line. You'll notice in the bottom right hand portion of your phone, the video and audio still continues to play as you pose your question. You can type your question on the question line and then hit the submit button for your question to be directed right to our moderators. To return to the live, simply click on the video at the bottom right hand corner of your phone. It will then expand to the full version of our broadcast. If you ever have any questions, feel free to ask our chat hosts. We're here to serve you. We'll see you every week, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. for Faith Form Live. Thank you for joining us every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. for our Faith Form Live. We posed a survey to inquire which subjects you would like to learn more about. Well, we've listened, and now we invite you to ask those questions that you might have concerning those subjects. Well, how do I ask questions? While you're watching from Facebook or YouTube, simply check the comments and one of the chat hosts will provide the link for you to our Faith Form Live question line. You simply click the link and it will take you to the question line. You'll notice in the bottom right hand portion of your phone, the video and audio still continues to play as you pose your question. You can type your question on the question line and then hit the submit button for your question to be directed right to our moderators. To return to the live, simply click on the video at the bottom right hand corner of your phone. It will then expand to the full version of our broadcast. If you ever have any questions, feel free to ask our chat hosts. We're here to serve you. We'll see you every week, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. for Faith Form Live. Yes. All right. All right. Did you all get that? That was good. That was good. We want this to be as interactive as possible. Remember how we used to do it right here in the house where we would get up at the microphone and ask whatever question. No question is, is crazy. No question is stupid. The only stupid or crazy question is the one that you do not ask. All right. So make sure you go ahead and chime in those friends and family members. Tonight we're still talking about Relationship Chronicles. Amen. Well, without further ado, we are going to get right into the word. All right, all right, all right. You ready? You ready? 
you ready? All right. Well, let's get on this journey to Relationship Chronicles. God bless and enjoy the, the lesson. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. Awesome. Our God is awesome. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to Faith Forum. Praise God. Welcome to Relationship Chronicles. This is our third installment in this series. The first one was entitled, Who I Am. Amen. The second one was Relationship Chron uh, Parameters, What I'm Not Going to Do. Praise God. And today we're talking about what I bring to the table. The, found the foundation, this is going to be an exciting, this is going to be an exciting lesson tonight. The foundation scripture for this lesson is 1 Peter 4 and 10. It says, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. 1 Peter 4 and 10. Now this is an exciting lesson for me. What I bring to the table. What I bring to the table. Now bring to the table is a phrase that really has two meanings. The first one is a contribution. Uh, it's, it, the first one is a business meaning. It, it means making a contribution or an offer in a discussion or negotiation between two or more parties. The second one is a bit more traditional and literal. It's the one that we're going to cover tonight. It means what I offer at a meal. Now, in, in my house, my wife is the cook. Amen? There's no competition. I don't need no amens from the peanut gallery at this time. <laughs> Uh, 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 there's no competition. As many of you know, she is an awesome cook. There are often times that we go to a restaurant and I, I, I pick a, a meal that I really don't, I, 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 I just compare it to my wife's cooking. So there are a lot of times that I go to a restaurant and I'm disappointed because it's not as good as what she cooks. Amen? So we don't share in the cooking responsibilities. It's just no competition. However, I can't cook. I can make a mean cup of coffee. Uh, yes, you can. Amen. <laughs> so now, now the question for, me, for you today is, who's the cook in your family? I raise this question so we can begin to think about who shares the responsibilities that come with the celebratory meals in your house, like for the holidays. You see, in a lot of homes, family members and close family friends come together and they bring the dish that they're best known for. Hallelujah. Everybody knows who's going to make the desserts, who's going to make the healthy choices, and who's going to make the main dishes. You know, whenever we have a church uh, a function, everybody, there's certain things that they want my wife to bring. Mainly macaroni and cheese. Mm-mm. And sweet potatoes. Hallelujah. When the day finally arrives, everyone comes to the table and they're hungry, not just for the meal, but the connection of the familiar. So now, I just want to make this plain. First of all, we're not talking about those people who just come to eat. All of us have advantageous people who are just there for what they can get. This is... this. What I bring to the table is not about them. Matthew 7 and 6 says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn around again and rend you. So as we're looking at this lesson, we're talking about the people that we are in relationship to. We're not talking about the users. We all have those kinds of people in our lives, family members, close friends, uh, colleagues, that we have to tolerate. They're just hanging on to get something from us. And if they become too advantageous, we have to set up our boundaries. We discussed that last week. Amen? Not today. Today I want to ask you, what do you bring to the table? I'm asking this question because I'm convinced that the condition of our hearts when we sit down at the relationship table impacts what we 
bring to the table. What we, what we offer, not what we have to offer, but what we actually offer reveals what we've learned about ourselves, about others, and about God. The conditions of our hearts can keep us paralyzed in our seats where nobody really understands how special we are and all the gifts that we have to give. Or our past experiences and what we've learned can encourage us to get up, discover even more about ourselves, and serve our best dish. For years, people have brought wounds to the table. Oh, my goodness. Unaware of what they were doing. Their hurts prevented them from seeing the good in themselves and in the people right in front of them. Hurts can keep us from, listen, 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 this is so good to me. Hurts can keep us from making real connections and maintaining honest expectations. What if we ask God to help us? To let go of our wounds, let go of the pain, let go of how people have used us and abused us, let go of, of our hurts and offenses, our preoccupations, so that we can see ourselves and those closest to us, those who are striving for their best as well, so that we can see all of this the way God sees it. God doesn't use people and obstacles in relationships to handicap us. He uses the situations, believe it or not, he's used the pain that you're going through and the pain that you've gone through, the stuff that still causes you to grit your teeth, the things that you still regret. God did not use them to keep you in a box. God brought those, allowed those things into your life to equip you to make you better than you were, mm, to make you better than ever. He desires that we develop standards not off of what people have done to us. He desires that we develop standards that are courageous and confident. I want you to read a, a passage of scripture in your own time. It's Luke 24, 13 through 35. Luke 24, 13 through 35. In this passage of scripture, the resurrected Jesus joins two men on their way to a village called Emmaus. And now, now he had just passed, he had just resurrected the stone, had been rolled away. Everyone hadn't fully recognized that he had risen. So when he walked up to the two men, God kept them from recognizing them. God kept them from seeing who he really was. As they walked together, they encouraged him. As a matter of fact, they beseeched him because he was going to continue walking to come eat with them. They begged him. Don't, you know, they said, read the scripture. They said, it's getting late. It's starting to be nightfall. Come on and eat with us. When they gathered at that meal in Luke 25, when they gathered at that meal, Jesus broke the bread just like he did with the 5,000. He broke the bread just like he did at the Lord's Supper. He gave thanks. And when he did that, at that moment, they recognized him. And when they recognized him, guess what happened? He disappeared. <laughs> It's as though God timed it that way to show that the table allows us and always has been a place of fellowship. It's always been a place of true worship, true revelation. It's a place where we receive a, a, a re real revelation about one another, about ourselves and who we really are to one another. It's the place where we really, relationships are the place where we really truly understand what we bring to the table. We can't allow past hurts to cause us to miss what we truly bring 
to the table. At the table, we have the opportunity to set and live up to standards of greatness. Because I'm telling you, when, you, when you're cl in close quarters with people, they're going to hold you to what you say. There's a term in prison, there's a term, I used to be a, 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 an outreach counselor at prisons, and there's a term that prisoners use toward one another. And they can't stand when you don't follow this term. Be about what you say you're about. Don't just talk about what you're about. Be about what you're about. And, you know, that's the wonderful thing about being in close proximity to those that you love and those who love you, those who are striving for greatness and, and prosperity just the way you are. If they're good and if you're all transparent, they're going to call you on the table. We can't allow past hurts to cause us to hide ourselves, to keep ourselves from being transparent and honest with others. It's an opportunity for us to begin to set standards and live up to them. Hebrews 10 and 24 says this, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. We have an opportunity not just to set a standard and live up to that standard, but this is an opportunity to encourage one another. I know a lot of times when we're criticized by someone that we care about and that care about us, we get offended and we go off in a corner and our feelings are hurt. But actually those people are spurring you on toward love and to good works. There is a good criticism and there is a poor criticism. You have to weigh the good with the bad, and you have to t ask yourself, okay, is th has this person been a positive influence in my life? Does this person encourage me? Does this person support me? If that is a ca the case, then I should be able to take the criticism that they give me because I want to set a standard. Now, the thing about... Uh, uh, setting a standard and what you bring to the table, what you bring to the table is going to cause you to be respected. It's going to give you a reputation. Let me just tell you something. Wherever my wife has gone and cooked a, a, a plate, oh, I don't know what you call it, a pan of macaroni and cheese, she's got people from all over the city calling her for macaroni and cheese. She's built respect. She's built a reputation. And all of that comes from the standard she set in cooking her macaroni. That's what she brings to the table. She brings to the table a high standard of preparation. And people love her for it. When you set a high standard, when you bring your high standards to the table and you show people what you're truly about, they're going to respect you and you're going to build a reputation. The Word of God tells us that a good reputation is better than gold. This is very important. So we can encourage one another. We can comfort one another at the table. We can spur one another on to a love and good works. Sometimes gathering around the table, though, can be a mirror of the negative things that are in our heart. Fears, insecurities, pride, or unforgiveness. This is not a time where we just sit with each other and hold ourselves, keep the pain inside. This is the time to release it. While you're at the table, forgive somebody. While you're at the table, release yourself from fears and insecurities. The people at the table with you love you. Release yourself from the pride that causes you to hide. The people at the table with you want to see what you bring. They want to eat. They want to be nourished. And we need to be nourishing one another at the table. We need to be sharing grace and compassion while we're telling one another our story. Ask God today to empty you out 
so you can truly see not what you've been through, not what others have done to you, but you can truly see all you have to offer. You can see what you bring to the table as well as the ones in your circle who are also offering their best dish. You can see what you have to offer and you can see what they have to offer. Can we appreciate God's craftsmanship around the table? It's not just about me. It's not just about mine. It's not just about I. But there are others near you who have something to offer too. They bring something to the table as well. So I wonder how different our relationships would be if we stopped just saying grace and made a standard of giving grace to others. <laughs> so the question is, what do you bring to the table? Are you argumentative? Are you testy, touchy, super sensitive? When people see you come and they know they have to be guarded, they know they have to watch what's going on around them, or are you loving? Are you caring? Are you compassionate? Do you desire that people see you for who you really are by showing that you are vulnerable, that you are not judgmental? That's a very interesting question. I'd love for you to begin to ask that of yourself tonight. What do I bring to the table? You know, some folks we hate to see coming. <laughs> we ask you, you know, if you're in that family, you ask, is so-and-so coming? Because if certain people are coming, it determines whether we're going or not. There are sometimes we, we decide we're not going to the meal because certain people are there. Are you that person that people avoid? Or are you someone that people welcome? Because they know they're going to be encouraged. They know they're going to be nourished. They know they're going to be lifted up. Even if they're being told the truth, they know that they're not going to feel like they're being harped on. They know that they're not going to be condemned, even though they may be convicted to do better. And so that's really the lesson for today. The question is, what do you bring to the table? I want to ask God, Father, heal me, make me whole, help me to see all that you've created to me to be so that I might serve others, so that I might bring what you desire to the table and we all eat the whole loaf. Thank you so much. Listen, maybe you're saying to yourself, I need to receive God in that way. I'm tired of being touchy. I'm tired of being sensitive. I'm tired of being easily offended and fearful. I need to let go. I need to be whole. The best way to do that is to receive Jesus into your heart. Maybe you want to receive him now. It's real simple. All you have to do is pray the prayer of salvation with me. Would you do that? Just close your eyes and pray with me now. It's simple. Just repeat after me. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner. And I know that your son died for my sins. Forgive me now. Make me whole. I want to be able to see what I bring to the table. I receive Jesus into my heart. I make him Lord and Savior now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, 
You may not feel any different, but let me tell you something. You made all the difference in the world. God is going to come in. He's going to flood you with love. He, you're going to feel his presence in your life, and you're going to know what you're meant for. You're going to know what you bring to the table, what you have to offer in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. That was a good word, Apostle. Good word, good word. All right. I know you all got some questions, so uh, go ahead and start submitting your questions. Uh, we got the man of God joining us right here to answer them right on the spot. We're talking about relationship chronicles and what I bring to the table. You know, Apostle, as you, you uh, shared the topic, you know, right away I thought back to when we were dating. Mm -hmm. You know, and before we started dating, you know, I would sit around and talk to uh, various girlfriends, and we all had, you know, in mind what we wanted um, in a man. <laughs> Come you on. Know. Some of us with bad credit. <laughs> Some of us with, with uh, you know, rough eating habits. Some of us house ain't clean, ain't been clean. Can't cook. Can't cook. But we want to Ain't man. none of that you now. Let's just say that first. Amen. Uh, Amen. <laughs> but one of the, the, the beautiful things, though, is that as I began to become mature, I realized I had to have something to bring to the table. Amen. I couldn't just want a, a man with money. You know, we want everything. We want him to have money. We want them to uh, have a good job, but we want them to spend as much time with us as possible. We want him to come home, cook, and clean. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and then do other things. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so, um, so when you talk about what we bring to the table, mm -hmm. you know, let's just talk a little bit about some of the practical things that, um, that you know, we, we make assumptions with relationships. I, as you were talking, I thought about one of my favorite uh, people of the Bible, Abigail. You know, here it was, she was having issues in her relationship, in her marriage, but I just wonder, did some of those character uh, traits, were they already there? Did her husband already drink? And she just said, you know what, I'ma just go on and accept that. Uh, you know, what, what are some things that, uh, we bring, to, we say that we want to bring to the table, but then we make exceptions. You well, you know, I, that's a good question. I think most of us talk about what we want someone to bring to the table. We never really think about what we have to offer. I've heard women say, well, you know, my husband, talking about their future spouse, is going to have to be a cook because I don't know how to cook. Instead of saying, because I want a good husband, let me learn how to cook. I, I know a lot of men who are looking for the best wife, the woman who cooks, cleans, is loyal, and works, while simultaneously being alcoholics. They enter the marriage drinkers. They enter the marriage being irresponsible. They enter the relationship with a lot of faults that they have no real sense of addressing. And so before we can actually look at uh, what we want from a spouse, you have to uh, uh, viciously self-examine what exactly do you have to offer. You're not the bag of beans you think you are. You, 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 you're not the box of chocolates. If you are, a whole lot of people then ate off of it already. You're not the box of chocolates. So what do you have to offer? I believe, I believe Abigail's husband was already a drinker. He had some positive things going for him, but he had some issues, just as all of us do. You know, if you want to be married, husband, if you want to be married, wife, get your credit together first. You, 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 we ask questions, how do I know when I'm ready? <laughs> when you don't have a lot of debt, <laughs> when you don't have a lot of personal issues, when you don't spend all your time with your girlfriends or with the boys, then you know you're ready. So it's really about what I bring 
what I have to offer, not just what the other person, uh, uh, it just came to me, something that my wife and I talk about all the time. I know a lot of guys who are looking for a wife. There's a lot of women who are looking for a husband. And the reality is maybe I should be trying to be the husband that finds a wife or the wife that gets a husband. Amen. That sounds like a class right there. Amen. Well, we actually have a couple of questions coming in from listeners. Amen. So the first question is, how do I maintain my standards of what I bring to the table and not compromise for those who don't need, meet my standards? And, you know, we have those kinds of people all the time in our lives. When we have meals, when we have family meals, there's always there those who are just coming to eat. These are not people that we're actually in relationship with. These are people that we know and that join us. So we have to think and, and really uh, categorize the people in our lives. Some of the people, even though they're family, even though they're blood, even though they've been in your life for a long time. Some of them are really just associates. They're not really close friends. Why? Because they do more using than giving. So you really have to, there, there are several levels of standards. One level of standards is who I want to be with. The next, and that is not husband and wife, that's just people in general. The next level is, and I don't mean levels, I mean categories. The next category is who I want to be with me. The third category is who am I willing to tolerate their company for. Because there's going to be people that you have to be around. Stop thinking of them as part of a category that they don't belong to. They're just associates. We, we tend to think blood family has a closeness because they blood family. That's not true. There are a lot of friends that are much closer to, to you than your blood family will ever be. You're just going to have to see that and develop the standards accordingly. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, you got me thinking about a lot of things. One, you know, you got me thinking about uh, it's certain family members that I feel like are my favorites. I love when they come around. And then it's some, it's like, when you leaving? <laughs> Amen. Did I just say that? You did. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, I, I definitely can relate to that. It's some family members, I wish they would just come and live with me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, we have another uh, question from another listener. Uh, as far as self-examination is concerned, is it okay to ask trusted others what they see in us, both the negative and the positive things? You have to. But you said a key word, trusted others. Have is we, we talk to too many people about personal matters that are private. You have private relationships then you have public relationships, and then you just have relationships. You've got to make sure that you're talking to someone, first of all, who is not just there who can give you good criticism, but what qualifies someone who can give you positive criticism? What makes them qualified to do that? There's one thing that makes them qualified to do that. They take good criticism. Stop asking people what they think when they've never asked you what you think. You talk to people who really talk to you. That's the standard. That's good right there. That could be a lesson by itself. <laughs> you talk to people who really talk to you. All right. All right. I hope somebody heard that. Because some of us sitting up giving our time and energy and conversation to people 
that as soon as you leave them, their presence, they go and talk about you. Amen. Amen. Did you hear me? They go and talk about you. Go find you some credible other friends that value you a little bit more. Amen. And one of the, the uh, measurements you said that they would share with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. They share. That's good. That's good. Well, all right. We, um, any more questions? Come on in with your questions. Uh, you can even, if you can't get to the, um, the, the Q and A form, go ahead and type them right into, uh, the comment section. Amen. Yes. Amen. The Lord. And so when, when apostle, uh, was talking about, uh, the relationship thing, mm -hmm. another one of my favorite, uh, people in the Bible came to mind, Esther, you know, here it was, she, she took a whole year to prepare herself for marriage, there are a lot of times when, you know, we want to be in relationships and be it a woman man relationship or a friendship or a job or a career, whatever it is, we want successful relationships, but we don't want to settle down to put the time into it. You know, we just feel like it should come just because I want it to come. But Esther actually, there was uh, times of preparation, times of sacrifice. And so what would you say to anybody that's looking to, you know, get into a, a healthy relationship? What does that look like, times of sacrifice, of preparation? You, 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 the, the, real, um, the real standard mm -hmm. for a healthy relationship is this. Have you come to the place where you're comfortable being alone? Mm -hmm. Have you come to the place where you're happy by yourself when you get to that place where you're happy alone the person that you meet is going to have to match your level of happiness alone All right. see a lot of us search for relationships because we're lonely that's the wrong reason to search for a relationship we want a companion we we, we desire to, someone to talk to the reality is the person that you meet, friendship, marriage, whatever it is, has to match your level of happiness. If, they, if you haven't come to a place where you're happy by yourself, then another person's not going to make you happy. A person is not meant to complete us. A person is meant to enhance who we are. Do you know who you are? Do you know how you, what you have to offer? Are you happy alone? And that's funny that my wife brought up uh, Queen Esther because though she was chosen to be a, a husband to the king, I'm sorry, a wife to the king, she didn't see him for a year at all. She didn't see him at all for a year. So there was a year of preparation where she was bathed for hours and spent a whole lot of time with everybody else but the one she was chosen for. And she had to get comfortable in preparation. Are you comfortable in preparation? Are you comfortable preparing yourself? Are you comfortable being that husband? Are you practicing? being a husband to your mother, to your sister, to your female friends? Are you practicing being a wife to your brothers, to your father, to your male friends? Because if you're waiting for a husband to be a wife, or if you're waiting for a wife to be a husband, once you get them, it's too late. Set a standard now. Figure out what you bring to the table and then practice preparing it mm, that's yeah. good that's good practice yeah i can share a little story with you all that i hadn't practiced enough before we got married let me give you a good example of what practicing mean now for me i absolutely love my family love spending time with my family and i had an, a favorite aunt that lived right up the street from me so every before i got married every day after work before i went home i stopped by auntie jackie's house that was just a part of my day 
And so here it is. I met this, this wonderful man. We get married, and I got in mind, you know, he'll just be at home waiting for me, even, even if it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night now. I'm, I, I need to help somebody out. I'm talking about practicing beforehand because I didn't practice. And so after we got married for at least a good six months, I went on and on with this behavior of getting off work and stopping by Auntie Jackie's house. And guess what? It was just ridiculous, y'all, because I was still eating dinner with Auntie Jackie. <laughs> Got a whole husband at home. And finally, after about six months, he was so nice about it, so nice about it. He said, um, baby, now here's the tripped out thing. I wouldn't even call and let him know. I was a, ooh, <laughs> a, just such. Because I wouldn't even call this man and let him know where I was. And one day he said, baby, do you mind at least calling me to let me know that you're okay <laughs> and where you are? I said, okay, <laughs> I'll do that. So mm -hmm. then what I started doing was at least calling him to let him know that I was at Auntie Jackie's <laughs> house. I still wouldn't go home. My point is this. Some of us, when we're talking about practicing, eventually I got that wrapped around my head. I'm a wife now. I need to go home and not only go home, I need to go home and cook for my husband <laughs> and actually eat dinner with him. Especially as good as you cook. Amen. <laughs> and so my point is this. Some of us have such close, close, close relationships with our family members, and we're not understanding that once we get married, our husband is our family. Amen. And so as you're as you're desiring a husband, as you're desiring uh, that relationship, what are you practice sacrificing right where you are, whatever that sacrifice looked like for you. For me, it was not that I couldn't spend time with my aunt. I just couldn't do it every day. Amen. So start practicing. What are some things that God is telling you now? If you're preparing for that husband, if you're preparing for that mate, what right now, that time that, you, that you're uh, going to be eventually spending with him, share it with you and the Lord for now. Amen? Amen. That's just a tidbit from uh, Prophetess Tahita. All right, we got another question uh, coming in from another listener. All right? So the question is, how do I approach others on levels I aspire to be? Oh, that's a really good question, because if, if you have others in your life or even in your purview and you see that they, that they are at a place where you aspire to be, most of those people are mature enough for you to just walk up and ask. Listen, I, you are doing some things that I really want to learn how to do. You know, as a matter of fact, I just went through that today. I was uh, with, my, with my immediate, he's not really my boss, he's a great guy, he, 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 uh, he's a project manager, he's got a world of massive ex uh, experience, but he's so vulnerable, he's always asking me my opinion, so, and so I thought about it today, I said, you know what, uh, can you, I want to take a class, I want to begin to learn some of the things that you know technically, I know a lot from being in the school of hard knocks, but I want to learn some technical stuff. I want to learn some formal, I want to have a formal education in some things. Can you tell me the best places to go? He said, you know what he said to me? He said, you know what, Vince, that's a great question. I've got a list of places. I'll, I'll compile them for you and have them for you tomorrow. Your future may be as simple as a question away. I'm sure if, if they are where you want to be, they won't mind leading you to where they are. All right. That's a good, all right. That's good. <laughs> Thank you for that, Apostle. Okay, we have another uh, question. Okay. Does it matter how long the preparation time is? Well, the reality is we don't deal with time. We deal with preparation. However, the lo however long the time takes, God decides. You know that you've been preparing long enough when God brings you someone. What we have to concern ourselves with is committing to it, surrendering to your preparation. 
my wife makes this is this is very interesting my wife makes the best macaroni and cheese in the world you know you don't in the world and it bothers me that no matter how long it takes she takes her time no matter who it's for it's gotten to the point where all I, I, I only, the only requirement I have right now is make sure I get a little on the side. Because she just doesn't give me the best. She gives everyone the best. That's her standard. Is your standard to prepare to give this person the best you have? If that's your standard, you're going to be preparing a long time. Because your standard has to be to give your best to everyone. When you make that standard and prepare, there's no telling how fast who you're preparing for comes to you. See, a lot is lost in how we think we should, we should prepare. Prepare to be your best. That's a good word. Prepare to be your best. Now, you know what uh, favorite uh, person in the Bible you just made me think of? My girlfriend, Ruth. Yes, she was preparing. And she didn't know that, you know, it wasn't, she was doing her best. She was in the field. She was working. She was uh, uh, doing what she had to do. Not in, it had nothing in mind about if a mate was going to come or not. But that's where she was found. Amen. All right, we have another uh, question. Does it matter how long the preparation, oh, oh, okay, this is a part two to that question, the question that we just asked, does it matter how long the preparation time within non-marital relationships? Say one more question. What's the question? So the question was, does it matter how long the preparation time is mm -hmm. within non-marital relationships? So. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it, are you talking about friendships? Because we still have to see, I think the focus is on getting someone or having someone when the focus should be on being someone. It doesn't matter how long it takes me to get a friend because I'm my own friend. I'm comfortable in my skin. I love where I am. I enjoy the people who are in my life right now. Most importantly, I've learned to enjoy where I am. This is what Paul said. Paul said, I've been abased and I've been abound. And here is the thing that I've learned. I've learned that whatever situation I'm in, to be content. I am content. Paul was a man who loved himself. In all of his mistakes, in all of his problems, in all of his issues, Paul got comfortable with himself. Get comfortable with yourself. Get comfortable. When you do that, when you truly are comfortable, it doesn't matter whether it's a friendship or a, a manship or a womanship, it doesn't matter. When you get comfortable with yourself, they will find you because you're so secure. You're so comfortable. You're so transparent. People are looking for people who can love them and who they can love. But if we're busy looking, how can we be found? All right, good. good. Thank you for that, Apostle. <laughs> All right. Okay, we have another question. So I've been alone for years. What would you say? Would you say I'm not happy with being alone? That's, a, a, that's not a question I could answer. Are you happy being alone? Are you secure being alone? Are you vulnerable? Are you at peace? So, there, so the part two to that is what if I'm secure within myself but still not happy being alone? then you're not secure with yourself. Because God has people in your life right now. But you're not recognizing them because you're looking for one person. 
And so we've got to be comfortable with where we are, with who we're with, and with who we are. Whether you can be alone and not be lonely and not have any friends. Why? Because you then realize that Jesus is truly your comforter. I know this sounds cliche, that he is truly your guide, that God is really your lover. Have you gone there? Have you allowed God to love you? Do you talk to him and allow him to speak back to you? I remember something that someone said when I, when I didn't know him very well, but when they said it, it made me love them for saying what they said. They said that there are times when they're, whenever they're in worship, whenever they're in worship, they realize that they're loving on God. But they also recognize that it's not a one-way street. So they spend some time loving on God and then they silently allow him to love on them. Yes. Have you experienced in a real time, real way, the love of God in your heart? Because he and only he can take away your loneliness. Yeah. Only he can. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's really good. You know, listening to you say that, take me back to when I first met you. And <laughs> there were a couple of books that I was reading. One of the books, and I've shared this with many single women, but one of the books was, uh, the name of it was Secrets of an Irresistible Woman. But in that book, it was written by Michelle McKinney Hammond. Mm -hmm. And she talked about you know, the, the, the secret to being irresistible is being so into God that your mate would have to find you in God. Amen. All right, we have another uh, question from a listener. Part C. I'm sorry? I feel like a part C. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, I can, so can I desire a mate? So they're, a they're asking, so I can't desire a mate? And that's a very valid question. God built us for relationship. Even when you want, don't want to desire a mate, you will desire a mate. The point is not whether you desire a mate or not. The point is, are you ready to have one? Because we can desire a mate. You know, when I was seven, I wanted a Cadillac. You know, my father had a Cadillac. He had an Elder White Rado, a white Elder Rado with red interior and red, red pinstripe in it. I wanted a Cadillac. Yes. I couldn't touch the foot pedals. <laughs> so it's not a matter of whether we desire one. There has to be an honest self-evaluation. You know, there are a lot of things that are in our lives that we would have to get rid of before we even considered a mate. There are a lot of fears, a lot of insecurities, there are a lot of things in our lives. You know, there are a lot of people, as my wife was saying, there are a lot of people in our lives that take the place of relationships and we don't want to let them go. We don't, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. mm -mm. I remember someone telling me the other day, I, I, I have a, uh, they, they had a little puppy, a little poodle. It wasn't a puppy. They had a poodle. And I was like, oh, you love, that's a, such a beautiful poodle and everything. And I was, and they were like, yeah. And I, I, we had talked about relationships and everything before me and this individual. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to pray that you find a man, because I was trying to encourage her. I was, I'm going to pray that you find a man that loves poodles. She said, don't pray that. Because if I get a good man, I'm going to give up this poodle. <laughs> You've got to understand what in your life do you need to get rid of or add to prepare for a mate. One of them is peace. You need to add peace to your life. I, if, if God doesn't bring me somebody, I'm okay. 
when you get to that place, God then brings you somebody. But you've got to first get to that place. Amen. Amen. Yes. Say that, Brother Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, these have been some great, great questions tonight. All right. We got another, another question. Okay. How do, I, how do I not become discouraged when what I bring to the table is not appreciated in the workplace? Oh, my gosh. Stop the, stop the presses. Oh, you're going to answer this. Go ahead. You answer. Amen. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. That's a great question. Yes, it, it begs the answer, why do you bring it? I preach Sunday. I preach Tuesday. I've been preaching for 15 years. If I preached for appreciation, I would have given up years ago. All right, all right. I do. I bring this to the table because this is what God called me to do. This is who God called me to be. And if there's nobody here but me, and it's going to be my wife, me, my wife, and the angels, I'm going to preach. I preach at home. I preach in my sleep. My wife wakes me up, and I preach. The question is not whether they appreciate you or not. The question really is, why do you do it? Is it for appreciation? Or is it because it's what God purposed you? It's who God purposed you to be. There are so many people who are so gifted, they should be heard and seen by millions. But they're not. They give the best. They give what millions could have to a few. And half of the few they give them to don't say thank you. But they keep giving because it's who they are. Why do you give? Why do you bring what you bring to the table? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Amen. Amen. That was good. That was really good. And just to add my uh, cherry on top of that, one of the things that I do on a daily basis when I go into the workplace is remind myself, going back to what you said, I'm not doing this for the people that I'm physically working for. I'm doing this as unto the, to the Lord. My work ethics in the workplace is actually a form of worship to God. So I just imagine the Lord is just watching me include my attitude, even though sometimes I mess up there. <laughs> Amen. But I do what I do as unto the Lord, as a form of worship. So I try my best to be the best while I'm there. And it's not about the people, because if it was, then I wouldn't be there. Amen. Mm. Yes. Yes. Praise all right. All right. So that's how you not be discouraged. Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself. And so all of the, what we're going through with Relationship Chronicles is not just about how we relate to others. Mm -hmm. It's first about how we relate to God mm -hmm. and how we allow God to show us how to relate to ourselves. When you relate to God well and yourself well, you Others will be drawn to you. And that's really the key. We want a lot of things. You know, I used to want just to have somebody else because I was tired of being alone. But I, even though I was tired of being alone, I never spent the time I needed to know who I was. That was my problem. I was so busy being tired that I never took some of that time to learn me. It's a, it's a problem that we all have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, this is a really good question. Thank you for that, Apostle. I'm laughing because I feel like I'm, I'm putting these questions in here, but they, somebody else putting them here. This is really good. <laughs> so this next question is, do I settle into a position that does not allow me to utilize my value? No, you can't. Because value is not expressed through a position. Value is expressed through a posture. A po that posture says, I'm ready to serve wherever I am. I'm ready to give no matter who it's to. I'm ready to love because God created me to love. 
He loved me first. And because he loved me, I love others. So your value is who you are. It's who God created you to be. It's not a position. It's a posture. I want, I'm mad, and I want to serve my wife. I'm mad at her. Well, not right now. But yeah. why? Because serving her is not my position. Serving her is who I am. When I'm on my job, I don't want to ask anybody if they need any help, but I do. Because it's who I am. And so when I operate in my value and understand where my value comes from, I'm going to be blessed no matter what. I'm going to be happy no matter what. I'm going to have joy no matter what. But I've got to change my perspective on my value. Yes, very good. Very good. Thank you, Apostle. And so when I looked at that question, you know, I thought about myself and how I've moved around to various sister uh, city agencies. And there were times when I was, you know, frustrated about, you know, oh, my gosh, they're taking advantage of me. You know, Jesus, come get me because they're taking <laughs> advantage of me. <laughs> and so, you know, through, throughout the years, the teachings that you've provided, you know, you were uh, just teaching me and training me that though uh, I felt a certain way in certain positions, nobody could, could use me. That was first and foremost. I couldn't be used. God was always going to make a way of escape for me. But there was something there for me to get to grow up from myself. So there were times when I may have felt like, oh, my goodness, these people are taking advantage of me. But God... Don't let me leave not one second before my time because I need to get whatever it is that I need to get from here to get to my next level. Amen. Amen. That's good. <laughs> I'm just enjoying that word. Yeah. So listen to what she's saying. Mm -hmm. Are you getting all that you should be getting while you're giving? Mm -hmm. You have to not see. We tend to give and guard while we give which makes it difficult for us to learn what God has us to, for us to learn while we're giving. Remember I said God doesn't put us in situations and relationships to handicap us. He puts us there to equip us. It's about your perspective. Yeah. That's good. That is good. That is good. Thank you so much, Apostle. Did you all enjoy those questions? Yes, yes, those were good. Those were good. All right, all right. So uh, make sure you uh, revisit the, the lesson from tonight. Replay it for some friends and family members, for some coworkers. Amen. Because tonight was a really good uh, topic on relationship chronicles, what I bring to the table. Can I interject? Yes, yes, yes. Prophetess was hot tonight, wasn't she? She was hot tonight. I love it. I love it. I love it. And this, you know, the, the wonderful thing about this is what you're seeing, really you're getting a, a glimpse. You're gleaning from what we do in, in our own home. I'm not as good standing in front of a pulpit as I am when she's asking me questions. <laughs> She asked great questions. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, Apostle. Thank you for that. Okay, well, we're going to um, go on and wrap things up for the night. Amen. We thank you all so much for joining us. Amen. If you would like to uh, sow into this word tonight, let me just say we're doing some great things here at Kingdom Builders Ministries International. As you can tell, we're doing some different things with the production. You're seeing the praise and worship team. Uh, we're doing our outreach. We're expanding here uh, at our uh, physical location, uh, the children's ministry. We're doing great things there. If you would like to sow into this ministry and the things that we're doing here at Kingdom Builders so that we can continue to put this word out into the, the city, the, the state, the nation, and even around the world, uh, go to our website at www.kingdombuilderschicago.com. 
uh, go to uh, click. Uh, there's a button at the corner, the right hand corner, uh, the give button. Click there, and you will actually see six different ways to give. We truly appreciate you all from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you all. We thank you all. We thank you all. And let's just close out with prayer. I just want to say one last thing. A great relationship with anyone starts with a great person. If every single person in every relationship decided that they were going to commit to being great people, we'd have better relationships. That's the key. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we just thank you. Father, I thank you for this word, what I bring to the table. Help us to see what we actually bring to the table. Give us a bird's eye view into ourselves, into our hearts, into our lives. Help us to prepare to be better cooks. So that when we have those times where we're sitting at the relationship table, someone can be nourished by what we have. Father, we thank you right now. And though we leave one another, we know that we will never leave your presence. Thank you, Father, for your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Join us every Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. for our Faith Forum Live. Whether you subscribe to our YouTube channel or if you watch us via Facebook Live, you will now have the opportunity to ask real-life questions in real time. You simply follow the link, post your anonymous question pertaining to the subject on the line, and hit the submit button. Our apostle will then be able to provide scripturally sound wisdom to help answer your questions. Our very own prophetess Tahita Hinton will moderate our faith forum. We can't wait to dive deep into the word, ask some questions, and get some answers. This is Faith Forum Live. Hey Kingdom Kids, I'm Pastor Mel and I'm inviting you to join us every Saturday at 10 a.m. on Zoom for Kingdom Kids Children's Ministry. Our mission is to know, grow, and show the love of God. We have great activities, praise and worship, prayer. We get to learn awesome lessons right now about the Word of God that will help you to develop and grow into the Kingdom Kid that God is calling you to be. I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Kingdom Builders, we have a goal and we need you. Ask us what our goal is. Go ahead, ask us. I'm so glad you asked. Our goal is to reach the nations. <laughs> what he said, we want to reach the nation so we need your help. We are Kingdom Builders Ministries International of Chicago. But we want to make sure that we reach people everywhere around the world so that we're able to share this awesome word through our very own Apostle Vince Henson. So this is what we need you to do. We need every single one of you to go to YouTube, search for Kingdom Builders Ministries International. When you find our page, do me a favor and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. We would really appreciate it. Even if you watch us on other platforms, this will help us to expand even more. So do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate you subscribing to our channel. We look, we look forward, forward to, to seeing, seeing you real soon. soon.